Here it is, the brand new Range Rover P510E Autobiography, and find out how this is the best Range Rover you can buy. I'm Max Aftervani, and welcome to Driven Plus. So this is the daddy Range Rover, the one you want to be seen driving. Now, P510E, what does it mean? Well, it's a three litre straight six petrol engine combined with a 38.2 kilowatt hour battery. Sounds heavy, doesn't it? That's because it is. You see, the unladen weight of this car is 2.7 ton. Now imagine a car full of people, a boot full of stuff and a full tank. This thing will weigh three tons. Wow. It's not all bad though. The engine, it produces 503 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque, not to 60 in 5.3 seconds, and a top speed of 155 miles per hour. That's impressive. So in terms of styling from the front, it's not too different to its predecessor, is it? But why fix something that's not broken? Oh, mind you, this is a Range Rover. Let's not mention broken. Anyway, moving on, but now looking at it, it's boxier, but yet curvy at the same time. The biggest thing which has changed is probably the, the bottom part of the bumper here. But other than that, it looks great. So the side profile, it's not too different to its predecessor, although it is a little bit longer. Now the paintwork, it's lovely. It's the Carpathian gray, which is an 865 pounds option. Although what you see here is not what that gray looks like. This has been sat in PPF by APM Customs. Check them out if you want stuff doing like this or wrapping. But no, the way you you look at the, the combination between the interior colour and the Carpathian grey, it looks so good. It's so luxurious. It looks like a yacht on the road. Right, so onto the rear. This is what Range Rover has changed the most. It looks great. A load of hidden lights and the indicators light up in a swoosh motion as it is doing there. Very nice, very elegant, very sleek. Now, as we come down here, let's do the, uh, the obligatory sound test. Oh yes, the Range Rover P510E doesn't let you rev the engine up. Great. Okay, so as we look into the boot, Range Rover's kept the traditional split tailgate. Be a bit stupid if they got rid of that, wouldn't it? So there we are, 835 litres of storage. That's with the seats up. Seats down gives you a further 1,000. So drop this tailgate down. Now here comes the fun fit, which is brand new to the Range Rover. Oh, I have now a seat on this. That's pretty cool, isn't it? As it goes down, and I pop it all the way back down. Oh, give me a minute. I don't make these things easy. Oh, now remember that Sport I reviewed? It's got one of them. Now this thing makes more sense than the Sport because if I bring the tailgate up, you can now put all your bags when you go shopping so none of it fly, flies down and you lift the boot up, you can just take them out. That makes sense. Now this one's got the tow bar pack, so it will now have an erection. Like so. And here comes its party piece. So you know when you plug your, your tow bar in, you don't want to check that all the lights are working, it's all connected, right? Well. You can just do that with a click of a button. It will now have a dance. So the driving position is good, loads of vision. And one thing which particularly helps that is the introduction of these triangle windows here. Now they repositioned the wing mirrors slightly further back than the original one and they shrunk them down. So in terms of blind spot that way, it's not kind of usual Range Rover, it's a lot different, helps a lot. And you get the, uh, the clear view mirror, which is the camera. Now, I was gonna turn this off straight away because on the Sport, I didn't have a very good experience with it, but the sunroof, the sun doesn't really shine in too much, so it doesn't blind it. So, do you know what? I'm keeping that on for now. Don't actually mind that. So here's the cool fact. The P510E comes with four wheel steer as standard. So therefore, this car has the same turning circle as a Volkswagen Golf, 10 meters. That's insane. And it also helps 
through the corners such as these here so this car does not feel like a 2.7 ton vehicle this doesn't feel like a Range Rover at all Ah yes, see, you do feel like a king when driving the new Range Rover. Now, all Range Rovers should come with a butler as standard, but I brought my own with me today. Uh, Manuel, uh, chocolate please. Thank you, sir. You may go back now. Hmm, white chocolate and strawberry. Good choice, sir. I'm stopped. I'm going to put my foot right down to the floor. It's in sport, and I just want to demonstrate how much the front end of this car lifts up. <laughs> Welcome to Range Rover Airlines. <laughs> but one thing which stands out to me the most is how quiet it is in here. I think it might be a bit too quiet, but that's thanks to its noise cancelling speakers in the headrests but surely it's got to be that quiet, it's a bit too dangerous. Well, the Range Rover owner doesn't care. He sat in his own atmosphere. The Range Rover gets this something called Cabin Purification Pro, which basically purifies all the air coming into the, the cabin. So I am not breathing any of the air that's outside of this car. That's how mad it is. So you see me? I'm not getting ill today. So driving features include a heads-up display, which tells me the speed I'm doing, plus also the speed limit of the road, so that's really useful. Uh, onto the seats, now it's got heated and cool seats, that's, that's standard now Range Rover, but they've taken it a bit more. So you've got massage, but you've also got hot stone massage. Ah oh, yes. But you also get a Meridian sound system, and the, <laughs> the seats are 24-way adjustable. I didn't even know you could change the way you sit 24 ways. This really does have a better driving experience than its predecessor. It's so easy to live with, it's so easy to drive. That's all thanks to its four-wheel steering. Big fan of it. And it's, yeah, it's just more nimble and more, just a better experience. Now, Range Rover claims it'll do 321 miles per gallon. I don't know where they've got that figures from. I don't know if that's just the sole battery or combined. It's definitely not just the sole engine, but let's have a look what we're averaging. So we're averaging 37.5 mpg. That's not bad to be fair, considering it's a three litre petrol and obviously it's a heavy car. So it's quite good. I'd be quite impressed with that to be fair. Now there's no full fat EV Range Rover until next year. So you've got to kind of make do with these hybrids for now. But for me, I really do prefer the hybrid. You've got both options of engine and electric. But Range Rover claims 510E will do 70 miles of a full charge on electric only mode. Now I've been driving it for about 20 miles and it's saying I've got 33 miles left. And to be fair, I've been nice and easy. I haven't been putting my foot down. So expect real world about 50 miles range from the electric motor only. So onto the interior, let's start off in the back. And as every Range Rover, it's a very nice place to be. My seats are electrically adjusted, so I can bring it up, get more comfortable. And all this side panel has been reconfigured, so I can bring like a, a blind, a reading blind, to block out any sunlight coming into the cabin. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's like a, an old S-Class or old 7 Series back in the day. Bring that back down. I can also control the, uh, the panoramic roof, sunroof cover thing, um, but put that back. Thank you. Uh, ah, here we go again. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, so new on this armrest center console is you get like a tablet so you can control your, your climate, your blinds via this tablet thing here. Um, no, no, stop. Lower. Uh, how do I go back? Right there. So seats, I can 
put my seat heaters on, my seat coolers, um, put my massage seats on, so I can now get comfortable. And <laughs> it's back. I want to put my bottle in the cup holder. Just give me a bloody cup holder. Ah, oh, you know when technology take it too far, that's more of a nuisance. And it fits this time. So on the interior, in terms of luxury, this thing tops the scale. There's a clear upgrade from the previous generation. Now, first of all, let's start off with the steering wheel. Now, when I reviewed that Sport, it's got a steer different steering wheel. It's like more flat, but it hasn't got that center pillar there. Now, on to the, the fridge. Now, the fridge is now an optional extra on the autobiography. You have to pay to, uh, to, to cool your drinks. Where has my drink gone? There it is. So that's now getting cool. Now, you get a wireless charging pad as standard, but the problem with this one is because it's in an enclosed unit, and if say I close that part there, the phone gets that hot because there's nowhere for the heat to escape. You then have to take your phone out, kind of, oh, oh, and then put it in the fridge to cool down. So if you're gonna get one of these, take the fridge option. Now onto the infotainment system is very similar to that of the Sport. It's a 13 inch, 13.1 inch infotainment screen thing. So you've got loads of things to go through. Where do I even start? Let us start off with the cameras. Again, you've got the 3D effect which you will see on the screen now and you've also got the off-roading cameras and a towing camera so you can pinpoint where your trailer goes and the car will reverse the trailer into that spot now the navigation is very quick and clear that's what you like you also get apple carplay and android auto as standard but therefore you wouldn't expect anything less for the price of this car and that now brings me on to the price of the 510e See, the starting price of this car is £109,000. Add all the options and extras such as this one. On the road, this car is £142,000. Hmm. So, verdict. I really enjoyed my experience with the 510e today. The hybrid system kind of makes sense because you've got that option between petrol or electric mode only. But I've actually preferred driving this in electric mode only because it's so comfortable, it's so quiet, so effortless. The electric Range Rover, all electric Range Rover, it makes sense. And we'll have to wait till next year till we get one of them. But by all means, if you can get your head around the price tag, you might have bought the best Range Rover yet. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.